Um, let's today. At the end of my classes, a lot of times I will uh, tell the participants, particularly the last night, um, that if they have major decisions to make, to put them off for a few days. Uh, if they're driving home, that their automatic functions will come back into play when they put their hands on the wheel of the car. Uh, because a lot of times we go out into what other people consider altered states of awareness. And I've heard many reports of people who get out there and are quite comforted when they know that their body will do what it needs to do to keep them safe, which is the automatic unconscious takes over. And it gets you home, pretty much, and it does. So, you know, does that a lot for you. You're busy with other things, and you get where you're going, and by golly, you don't really remember how you got there, but... Uh, at any rate, uh, because of those, there's. I also tell them if they know anybody who has problems, to refer them to somebody else. <laughs> and I, I mean that quite sincerely. Uh, people who are their problems don't find me funny. People who are their problems don't create much value around me. Uh, and I made this distinction when I was in practice. It was shortly after my healing mentor died, Dr. Alan Beardall. And I started learning from a man named Martin Sage. And Martin taught me the distinction between caring and compassion. And caring is a, it's a, it's a great phenomenon. It's a great reality. It's, but the, in the dictionary def definition is quite accurate. It, it, it is a phenomenon that has worry and concern in it. If you're caring about somebody, you're worried or concerned about them. And I was for a lot of my patients. And I kept patients there who were their problems. Right When I started looking compassionately at them and thought, wait a minute, I'm just another person that they're telling the same damn story to, uh, I would ask them to go to another doctor because I didn't care for their problems. I, when people would come in, I would give them a couple of visits, and if they did have problems and they wanted to uh, get real curious and see if we could co-create a different reality around their problems, then we work together. And that's who I want in my seminars is people who, if they do have a problem, the problem is that they've looked for a solution and they can't find a solution, but they're still curiously looking. They haven't become the problem. Okay, If they become the problem, I don't want to deal with them. Uh, one of the greatest distinctions uh, somebody made for me, uh, Chris, a friend of mine's mom, I invited to my class. Chris was in her 70s at least, maybe late 70s. Uh, and had been fighting cancer for years and was in a new bout of it and uh, doing chemo and radiation. And uh, we spent the weekend together, and she came to my class, and we had a great time. Uh, she brought an honesty to the room that can only be found uh, in maturity, in, in, in age. And Tuesday, I was flying out, and she asked if I needed it, and I did. I t she gave me a ride to the airport. And when we got to the airport, I was getting my bags out of the car, and she got out and she said, you know, she said, before this weekend, she said, the cancer had me. She said, now, I have cancer. It's part of who I am, and that's all there is to it. The distinction to me was huge. She was not the cancer. The cancer didn't have her anymore. She had cancer. So if you know people with problems, there are people out there who want to solve problems, and I don't do a very good job at it. I enjoy laughing far too much for that www.micpeakperformance.com